Well, hello there, folks, and uh, welcome to uh, another one of my classes. For some of you, this is the first time that you've taken me. Uh, others of you have had me before, and uh, you might not need to watch this video. You might not feel the need to. Uh, but if you've never had me before and you don't know much about me, uh, other than maybe uh, from uh, some of the things that you've heard from other students, uh, perhaps you take a few minutes here and watch this video. The purpose of this video is to tell you a little bit about me so that you can relate to me as a human being. Uh, and I, I know that um, it is frequently a frustration of online students that they never get to know their classmates, they rarely ever get to know their, their teachers, uh, and I hear that some teachers don't interact much in discussion boards, uh, don't do videos, don't have um, interaction really of any sort, and so you feel kind of alone. And I do these videos so that we have a little bit of uh, what appears to be face-to-face -face contact. At least you, you've seen my face and you've heard my voice, you've heard the tone of my voice and hopefully the compassion and the care in my voice. Uh, and you know a little bit about me. So again, the purpose of this video is to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Dr. Mark Grimes. Uh, I was born in Atlanta in 1964. I have uh, parents who are, are still married, just celebrated their, I think, 58th wedding anniversary. And I have an older brother and a younger sister. Uh, my dad worked for the Coca-Cola company for 35, I guess, something like that years as an architect. He had gone to Georgia Tech, gotten an engineering degree, and um, after he got out of the Army, went to work for Georgia Tech, which is right down the street, or went to work for Coca-Cola, which is right down the street from Georgia Tech. Uh, so he spent most of his adult life from uh, the early college days until his retirement in the same square mile um, as far as uh, his day-to-day -day activities go. He retired from the Coca-Cola company in 1989, and that means that he has been retired now for nearly as long as he worked. It's hard to, for me to imagine how fast time has gone by. I remember going to his retirement party at Coca-Cola and hearing people talk about how wonderful he was and how hard a worker he was and uh, how dependable, how loyal, how smart. And you got to tell you that when you hear things like that about your dad, it makes not only you proud, but it also makes you feel challenged to live up to the expectations that he set. Hopefully you have similar experiences where those who have gone before you have set the bar pretty high and have encouraged and, and maybe even challenged you to hit that bar and maybe exceed that bar. And uh, perhaps that influences your work ethic. I tell you that story about my dad because that helps to define who I am. Uh, I want to be like my dad. And uh, that involves or includes working hard and doing the very best I can at everything that I do. I teach uh, and I put everything into it. Uh, I interact with students. Uh, I try to make things challenging and yet doable. And I get a lot of that from my dad. He probably called in sick five times in 35 years of work. Uh, I very rarely ever call in sick. Uh, I log in uh, almost every Saturday and Sunday and in the evenings and on holidays. Uh, this, this is a big part of who I am. Uh, my mom, uh, that my dad was Ralph. My mom is Carol. Uh, she did a year of college and then got married and then raised kids. And she has done a phenomenal job of, of teaching us where my dad taught us a little bit about compassion, but mostly about dependability and integrity and uh, work ethic and things like that. Mom taught us a lot about caring for other people. And so um, a lot of uh, the way that I teach comes from my mom and is uh, aware of the needs of people, um, watching out for them to make sure that they don't get left behind, that they feel like they have uh, an advocate or, or somebody who cares. Uh, my older brother Rick is 21 months older than me. Uh, like dad, he is an engineer. He went to Southern Polytechnic. At the time it was Southern Tech, now it's part of Kennesaw. And he got an engineering degree. Um, and he does just about anything he wants to with his hands. He can work on cars, he can do electrical. He, at, at times in the past he has uh, done work with folks who contract work on houses. Uh, right now he runs the network for the company that he works for. He has rebuilt laptops. Uh, he can do any of that kind of stuff and I've learned a lot from my older brother about home repair and about auto repair. I can remember in, high, in college being in Birmingham and having to change out the, the water pump on my car uh, and I call him every few minutes. What do I do now? What am I looking for? What does this piece look like? And he talked me through it and I changed out my, my own water pump with his help. When I bought my first house, he helped me understand 
uh, all of the intricacies of wiring a house and as I put in uh, light switches and electrical outlets and things like that uh, he would give me pointers on what to do and what not to do and uh, I have survived largely thanks to him uh, he's a great guy my younger sister Julie is almost exactly three years younger than me and she is um, she's got a big heart she cares about people she spent a number of years she got a, a she got a degree in business I think it was from Kennesaw uh, and she spent a, a number of her years working with a computer tech firm in sales and, and things like that uh, but a number of years ago she uh, quit that left that job and now she is the executive director or something of uh, a, what I guess amounts to a, a homeless ministry in the Atlanta area and she spends her days uh, working around there and working with people who don't have much and loving on kids and um, she has uh, been on a lot of mission trips all over the world working with AIDS uh, patients and um, unwed mothers and, and all kinds of things. It's just kind of a, a admirable what all she does to give of herself. Uh, she's been known to buy a house and fix it up and sell it cheaply or give it away perhaps. So uh, I, I admire her a lot in, in terms of that. She's also got an awful lot of energy. She does 12 things at once and seems like she never sleeps. What an amazing, amazing uh, lady she is. Uh, that's my family. Uh, all of those folks have influenced me and, and taught me something about life and how to treat people and how to do things right and how to give it my all. Uh, but that's not the only part of my family. Um, I am married to Pam. Uh, we just celebrated our 20 first getting ready to celebrate our 22nd anniversary uh, she is from America she came to Atlanta when she got out of high school and uh, we met a number of years after that point uh, got married and moved back to America and at the time we were both working for a payroll provider uh, ADP I was in a management role and she was working her way up through customer service like I had done and had moved over into a human resources role. She has a human resources degree from Georgia State. And uh, when we got married, we decided that we were ready to, to move out of the Atlanta area. And so we moved to Americas and I started a job here at GSW doing administrative things. Uh, one of my first jobs was working on a tourism partnership with uh, Sumter, Dooley, and Macon counties trying to get people to leave I-75 and come through and visit Carter Country and the cotton fields and uh, that, that kind of thing and, uh, and Andersonville. Uh, so anyway, but um, we uh, had our first child uh, who is uh, right now a student at GSW and uh, one of the reasons we came to America was because of the pace of life. We didn't want to have to put our child in a, a daycare up in Atlanta and take forever to go get her if something went wrong, if, uh, you know, fevers or anything like that. In America, you can get from place to place very quickly. The uh, people know each other. They know their neighbors. They care about each other. They know what's going on. They look out for each other. And that seemed very appealing to us. So we've been in America since 1999. Um, I started teaching as a part of my job at GSW, so I've been teaching in one form or fashion almost every single semester since fall of 99. So I'm getting ready to start uh, my 20th, I guess I've, I'm finishing up maybe my 20th year of teaching at GSW. I think uh, between falls and springs and summers, uh, that's like 60 semesters, and I've taught at least one class in more than 50 of those 60, uh, probably closer to about 55. So um, although I don't have the, the, the standing and the tenure at GSW, I am one of the longest running business professors in the School of Business, uh, which is soon to be the College of Business and Computing. Uh, so I've got Pam here. She is presently the director of the First Baptist Church of America's preschool program. Um, she's been doing that about seven years, and she is amazing with kids. Uh, everybody in town knows Miss Pam. Uh, she can't walk through Walmart without some little kid yelling, Miss Pam, and running across the store to give her a hug. And I admire that. Uh, I don't have that kind of effect on people. Don't know what I would do if, uh, if somebody ran across the store and gave me a hug. I'd probably feel very uncomfortable. Uh, but Pam is my wife of uh, over 20 years. Uh, we have five children. Three of them were adopted and two were, were natural born. The oldest is uh, adopted 
and uh, we don't have a lot of contact with her these days because she's reunited with her birth family and uh, she's doing pretty well there. She has a daughter of her own, so uh, while I have a granddaughter, don't see her much. Don't know that I've t really talked or s to or seen either one of them in uh, several years now, uh, but that's okay. She's doing well. Uh, my, my second oldest is also adopted. She is a graduate of GSW and she is married and her husband teaches here on the campus at GSW, although it's with the South Georgia State College entry program. And uh, he is working on his doctorate. So he is um, following in in similar path to what I did uh, and is positioning himself well for a long-term career in education. Um, she, um, the second oldest daughter, is uh, works part-time here on campus with career services. Maybe if you've had to interact with uh, Sandra Fowler and career services, you might have interacted with my daughter as well. Uh, the third oldest is actually my firstborn, and she is here uh, at GSW as a student. I'm very, very proud of her and what she accomplishes, and uh, she is a lot like her mom in the sense that she just connects with kids, and where kids run up to my wife, they also run up to my daughter. Uh, there are kids who uh, probably rightfully so look at me at church or in the store or whatever it's like eh, you're kind of sketchy looking you're you're kind of scary looking uh, but if i'm standing next to my daughter they'll run right up to her and look at me kind of funny to the side while they're hugging on her she's pretty amazing uh, my my fourth oldest is my second born she is a high school student about to become a junior uh, and is doing really well she is uh, overcome a lot of challenges in her life um, she's had uh, hearing problems and um, vi some vision problems. Everybody in my family's got vision problems. Uh, but she is, uh, she's doing very well with what she's choosing to do in life. Uh, she has run cross country. She has played soccer. She's done a lot of things. Uh, my, my older daughter, who uh, just talked about a moment ago, uh, played tennis and soccer and uh, che did cheerleading. And, and both of them uh, are part of that crowd at school that doesn't get included a lot because they have very high standards and people know not to uh, invite them to certain things because the, that's not who they are. And I'm kind of proud of the way that they've stood for what's right. Um, the, the, the one that I was just talking about, the, the high school student, uh, has taken on a lot of things just, just really to kind of prove that she could. And uh, she's positioning herself well for college. My youngest is the only boy in the family uh, literally the only boy uh, between my brother and my sister and myself until he came along uh, we had um, I got to count them in my head here one two three four five we had seven children all of which were girls uh, so uh, no boys to carry on the Grimes family name until Paul came along and uh, we heard about him through a friend uh, his mother was looking to adopt him uh, we were in the hospital room when he was born in South Carolina and we got to bring him home he is uh, in going into third grade now next school year and he's uh, he's an amazing little kid he, he's gonna be an engineer we're convinced he builds everything he sketches things he thinks things he's big picture kind of excuse me kind of thinking um, and uh, he's he's he needs very, very little sleep he goes to bed uh, hopefully at about 8 30 at night but it may sometimes it's 9 or 9 30 before he's asleep and then he's up at six o'clock and he is just going bouncing and wow how do you possibly at the at the age of, of eight uh, get by on you know eight or nine hours of sleep a night I, I need that much at the age of 55 uh, but that's my family they uh, all of them have influenced my life in one way or another and uh, taught me some things about life and how to treat people and how to maintain a positive outlook on life uh, and so they influence how I teach from a career standpoint, uh, I have worked, as I mentioned, at ADP in the payroll industry. I've worked at GSW for a while. Uh, there was a break there uh, from 2003 until 2013, where I'd worked with the local hospital doing education and training and development in human resources, uh, both in Americas and in Albany, when uh, the, the two hospitals merged. I came back to GSW in January of 2013 uh, to join the faculty as a full-fledged faculty member tenure track teaching HR and I have loved it here this is the greatest job I've ever had uh, it's uh, something that I, I enjoy doing that I seem to be pretty good at doing that students seem to like me doing and so uh, I think that I'll um, fingers crossed uh, 
unforeseen circumstances notwithstanding, probably will be doing this for the next 15 or 20 years until it's uh, finally time to retire and spend some time with my wife. Uh, from an education standpoint, uh, I got a bachelor's degree in religion from Samford University in Birmingham, Alabama. Then I went to Kennesaw State College, Kennesaw State University here in Georgia, and got a master's degree in business and management. And uh, while I was at GSW the first time, I started working on a doctorate in management from Argosy University. At the time, it was the University of Sarasota. I uh, got bought out by Argosy University, and I graduated from there when, uh, when it was Argosy. Got my doctorate and my, my uh, DBA, my Doctor of Business Administration, which is very similar to a PhD, in February of 2004. So that's been 15 years ago now that I got that. Uh, at this point in my life, uh, I am teaching, I am active in my church, I uh, run the sound system, teach a Sunday school class, uh, do lots of little volunteer things, and um, just try to keep up with my kids, do, helping them to, to accomplish the things that they want to accomplish, encouraging them, uh, coaching little league teams and school, school teams and things like that. Uh, and so I stay pretty busy. Um, that is uh, most of what you probably need to know about me, other than that I am an Alabama football fan. I'm a Georgia Tech football fan. Um, I cheer for Georgia when they're not playing one of those two. Uh, I feel pretty confident uh, each year in the, the championship games that uh, Georgia is going to come up very close but short to Alabama. Uh, I know without too much doubt that they're going to whip up on Tech almost every year uh, around Thanksgiving. But that doesn't stop me from supporting them. Um, really, uh, really love my, my kids' school and um, season ticket holder for football and active in, in several other ways there. Uh, but again, that's kind of who I am and hopefully gives you a little bit of understanding of what I bring into this class. I've got some HR background. I've got training and development background. I've been a manager. I've hired people. I've fired people. Um, I've had lots of family experiences that uh, give me some insight into human nature outside of the working world. So really, regardless of where you are, I didn't mention that my doctorate was largely online. So uh, I'm one of the few people here at GSW who really can relate to where you are. Uh, trying to do work kind of at your own pace, teaching yourself in some instances, interacting a little bit here and there with your professors, I, I relate to where you are. And I know how frustrating it was for me at times when I was working on coursework and really didn't know what to do and where to go. Uh, so I try to make sure that I'm, I'm pretty accessible to my students. And uh, as you'll see from my syllabus when you look at the syllabus video, my cell phone number is on the syllabus, just like uh, several other professors here at GSW. We're not the kind here at GSW that uh, are high and mighty and lofty and uh, don't bother us. Uh, we, we very much want to see you succeed. We want to be available to you. Uh, and hopefully you kind of get some of that impression from this video. At any rate, this has probably been going on long enough and you know more about me than you probably care to. If you got questions about me or you found something that connected with you, shoot me an email or give me a buzz or whatever and uh, let's connect a little bit further. Uh, in some of my classes I do little personal video calls uh, through technology, video conference technology. Some classes I don't. It depends on the nature of the class and the, uh, the semester that we're in. So maybe at some point we'll have an opportunity to interact with each other face-to-face, -face, so to speak, through video conference. If not, uh, I'm always here available for you if you need me and uh, looking forward to a good semester in this class and in future classes where we might get a chance to interact uh, and especially looking forward to the day when you walk across that stage and get your diploma uh, because I'm going to be sitting there and I'm going to be clapping for you and, and uh, feeling really good about your accomplishments. All for now, uh, I'm going to start pretty soon recording some video lectures for one of my classes. So I'm going to be sitting behind this camera most of the day, get started with something I know an awful lot about. That's myself. Uh, share with me about you if you have the opportunity and the interest. And other than that, we'll just check in from time to time to see how things are going.